Here we are at Larry's Thursday morning breakfast. We're going to go look at a guy's collection after this. What a gorgeous setup. You won't see many of these scouts around. Boy, this is one of the nicest ones I've seen. Said he made it out of eight different vehicles. Because they, you know, they rotted out pretty bad. We're going to go to a guy's collection this morning. Somewhere in Florida. Nice setup. I guess they meet every Thursday morning. And then they go to they go visit some guy's collection. The guy's got a beautiful setup here. Is a group photo. The evolution, and uh, of course, the, the main key factor to me, and it might be just just about the fur my hair was Smokey, and uh, so I learned, and he learned from me. And, uh, he used to be friends with Smokey Unit. He was a good guy, and you're gonna see good a lot McLaren, of McLaren bunch have been over three times. You know, and, and it's just been neat to have people because it throws them off. Where you see here, you ain't gonna realize. It's all the high shots. <laughs> He worked for General Motors. He was actually friends with Smokey Unit.
throw it in there. It's designed for the amount of air of wide open. He says, you never look at the top side of the car first. You did the underneath. And I says, why did... He says, the underneath tells you what the top will need. You, you follow what I'm trying to say, yeah. folks? Mm -hmm. yeah. If you don't get the air flowing under the air, which pulls everything... Follow me what I'm saying. Yeah. 
when the air comes under, it tells where the air is going on the car and how fast and what you can manipulate the air over the car. And I learned that, and that's what helped me a lot. But basically, the top on it, he just, and he came down, he says, well, one thing we do is at Daytona, we always got a crosswind off of the beach. And he says, what I'm going to try to do is, he put this fin on there, he says it's going to be two things. It's going to be, it give it a little more stability. When the wind hit it, that length kind of kept the car from going away and losing it. Of course, they had the AMA band, and there it is right there with my boss. They couldn't race over there, so they, but they were, they were, they were going to take it, and you might have to. But you can see this right here. See that little thing? They put a seal in, and they have to go so many laps at Le Mans. That has to be on there, or they get penalized. So that's how I knew they were going to take eventually. Bent on the side, see that cove? It goes through, it goes through the body. Had to run when they run, they had to run, this run Sebring to this car, and had to have a spare, and that's a special knockoff wheel, knockoff hammer from Indianapolis. And then I got it. But it hasn't been touched. You know, it hasn't been modified or anything. <laughs> but he was he was very gracious to me. You know, I mean, he really. Um, I, I showed it in the '80s at uh, uh, Daytona 500 in the tent, and just people flocked to this. And Smokey was down there. It was a good time when I went there. That's when I first got it and went in there. And, uh, Talk about the other versions of that car build, because yours is the racing version. Talk about the other versions of this car. Yeah, uh, you see that picture. Uh, See, this is now. I, I this, you know, when you talk to you, of, you know, of the car, there's that at Sebring when you come across the start finish line and finish the race at Sebring. That is, I cannot believe some of you photographers. That's 57, and the photography back then, I don't know how they did it at nighttime. It was 11 o'clock at night, and that car's doing 140 mile an hour, too. Did he win that race? He didn't win it. Did it he came in second in class, and it isn't as long, it ain't nowhere near like it. Because uh, Smokey refused to work on Harley or old stuff. He just. Step aside. That's where Smokey had all the cars. See the thing? And it, he rented a meat locker at Daytona. And you can see the meat locker. I don't know why they didn't bridge them. Yeah. I asked Smokey, is that in the niche of one of them? But you see how they angled it for the air? Yeah. See, they, they, yeah, they see it. Then. Now, what about the front of the front? What they'll do? Change that guy. No, it's, it's actually. That mirror would be a drag. No. That, it, it, uh, I, I asked about that initially. Off of that six cylinder and then that V8. That V8 was killer, and Smokey was killer, and the guy that designed this thing was killer. So it's a good marriage, you know, all the way around small. You know, and then speed it as it comes through the car and let it do its job in, in this stuff. How did Smokey know so much about Arrow? Where did he get it? I mean, was he in the Listen, I think he was born with it. I really did. Genius. Genius. He, he, uh, Genius. I, I was just amazed. Like I told you, I didn't get along with it. This here, if, if anybody's been around here all their life, they know the lady that drove this. Her name was uh, Betty Skelton. Anybody ever heard of her? She flew airplanes. Yes. And well, how did she fly them? Upside down. Yeah, and cutting the, uh, the ribbons at the fair. Well, anyway, she she actually set a record with this on the beach. And uh, it, now, Smokey prepared it, but he didn't sm uh, have nothing, you know, like you did this here. And it's a dual four car. It was never a fuel injector. Yeah. Didn't she just pass away this past year? Or Who? Betty Skelton. Yeah, uh, about two or three years ago. Three years ago. Here on this. This is that when it went back. And see, here's the experimental number of what they did with the team cars. They put experimental, uh, experimental number from Chevrolet. And right here, folks, is all about us. Here's the three team cars here. This is. Uh, 
This is John Fitch. That's Zora Dunthoff, and that's Betty Skelton there. Wow. The three team cars. And that's me and Zora and all in the SR2. This is, this is also neat for anybody photographic guy. She's doing about 130, 140 here. And look at how unique he is to the car doing yeah. that speed. And the dummies, I mean, it looks like she, he's go, she's going to run over him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know NASCAR has always got a screw with you. You see the, you see the, the Halibrands on the car? That's called Halibrand wheels, and they're knockoffs. NASCAR wouldn't let them run on the beach because they said it wasn't production. Well, they come out with them with the race version. But, but anyway, long story short, so Smokey says, well, we got to find some hubcaps or some rims to put on it. So he says, the hell with them. I'm going to put white walls and hubcaps on. That's her going to the, you know, on to the beach, and that's her doing 140 with the white walls and the hubcaps on the car. <laughs> Here he is showing Rick Hendrick his collection. Everybody yeah. wants that 427. Wow. Anyway, Yeah, that's a 67 L88. The one that the biggest clicks in the world. Started Corvette News. And when you bought a 56 or a 57 Corvette, you when you bought a new one, you get that magazine for the life. Everybody. Roger Penske. Yeah, it's him with Roger Penske. And uh, I basically was in the engine development. Actually started with Jim Hall at Chaparral with the engines, and then we we started developing it with the engines in the uh, took the engines out of the Chaparral and started putting them in these. So, but anyway, this is this is a real neat piece too. Uh, it's probably one of the most unique. I just went to Atlanta Motor Speedway with the car, and they unveiled a new Grand Sport up there, and uh, it was really a neat thing to see the, how they enjoyed the old eight millimeter rubbers, just like it run. All aluminum. This finished '64 and '65 at Sebring. I actually crewed on the car in uh, in '64 with Roger Penske. Bill, that picture behind you, that wasn't this that seat right here? First, the and then, see the other ones are the other three there, probably. and there's some of the Cobras in there too. I think it was at just rolling towards you. That was when they first built the car. Yeah. But you certainly wouldn't do much of that. <laughs> and, uh, this is uh, tissue thin doors. Real super light. Yeah. It's got a 50 gallon tank. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, it's got a movie it's camera. Just, sorry, see, see, see the camera? Uh, no, that's just like it was normal. No, I thought, I thought you were the story. No, I'm not. You need to do that because you won't believe how he, when he says it's Especially if you thin, have a 65. You, you just don't know. That's right. Yeah. Compare it to. That's several C2s. There's no crash bars. Yeah. 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 It uh, another thing this thing was really noted about was it had air jacks, you know, that lifted the car up at Sebring. It and they they could uh, Jim Hall was a uh, engineer, uh, mechanical engineer like I was, and he figured out how to fuel this thing, four tires, and the other cars that uh, was the Grand Sports and all. They were still trying to fuel it up, and then that's how come the cars are like it. it weighs less than 2,000 pounds. Yeah. How about the frame build? It's all tubular frame. How they come out of the mold with all the, the flares and everything on. And it was like 
almost 100 pounds lighter than the other four. Has this four body pounds. ever been, it's the original body? Mm -hmm. It's never wrecked or anything? Yeah, it, and they, they did a, not bad, it's just the guy he got the car from. This car should not be here. It should not even exist and even tell the story. This was, up, uh, <coughs> anybody living in New York, you know what our Harold Meyer and all that is in Painted Post, New York. This car didn't have a, a, an engine in it. It was sitting in the shop. And when the blood come through, it it, uh, it turned around and it got wedged in next to a refrigerator. And it, it kind of kept it from going around that and the hole. It already took the, the opening of his garage out and all the cars out. But basically, that saved it. When he come back in there, there was a car wedged against the refrigerator. And it, and it, so those Ferraris, Bill, they're never found. Right? No, no, never found. They found a wheel or two, but that was there. The water didn't damage the car? Didn't get in it. It exploded. This is a boat, one time, buddy. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, racing weight on this car, Bill? Two thousand, a little less than two thousand times to try. It, uh, it's the lightest one. Like I told you, the body was. And what Jim Hall did, he went into to a, an aircraft out to a fire range in Texas, and he watched them fuel at some of them, them uh, planes out there. And he he rigged up the same rig with a fifty-five gallon drum up on the thing with a big hose. And he made this to fit the hose with an O-ring. See, they, they laid the windshield back, and then they rolled this back, like this, <coughs> so the air would come over here. Yeah. Like, no, they never had yeah. nothing back here to do it. These actually help downforce right here. But these enter the air into the brakes, but they, they, they created a little bit of more down out there. And this did too. Sometimes they, they yeah, that's the all cooler rear end of all cooler in the transmission. Yeah. Right here. This is a real LA 67. Big block, you know, we have 396s. And, uh, and, uh, this is apps. See, the people don't understand. 67, the 68 should have been the 67, but they didn't have it ready. So they just made, you know, the, the coupe and made it over again. But this is actually the better car than all of them, you know, in a sense. Uh, Oh, leave them guys an hour later and uh, they, they're mad. <laughs> this is this is all different by arrow where the air comes in and comes through this. It's kind of the basic idea of that with a air coming in, but the air comes in like the NASCAR by a windshield six thousand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I got my buddy from Holly. We had a regular Holly guy that was right at the proof around. And uh, so he come up with this thing. You know, he, you had to know what you're doing up there. You would have spun it out or whatever. So when they got to pulling it down, they saw somebody happened to remember that car and everything. And started researching it. It was one of those. Few cars that he had had built. Oh, just for the motor. And uh, this is this was bad to own the car right here. Mm -hmm. And the L88 decal on the hood was prior to the L88. Yeah, that that was something else we did here. We, we when they designed the hood, you know, they didn't put the 427 in the hood. And when they they kind of put this on display, everybody wanted this hood without the 427 on. Couldn't say. They could, so they got rid of this and put 427 on the other. This is the prototype, but they wouldn't. They didn't want them to to, to have the hood with the not the 427. Billy underrated these at 430 horse to drop them under the uh, the L71 at 435 horse. They didn't really want to sell them, even though they're really about 560 horsepower. Go home, you got the shirt. I bought it in. He actually worked on this car. God, that's the smallest camera I've ever seen. <laughs> it, take, it, it takes great pictures, I'll tell you. Now, this, is, this is the kind this of trade. Right at Charlotte Motor Speedway with Elliot, reckoning. So 
I mean, erect it, whatever it was. And, but uh, this is actual passing crash car. And one of the, the key things about why I'm bad men about the Monte Carlo is I was one of the ones that helped put the back window of the Arrow 2. Uh, uh, worked with uh, the engineer Bob Stemple at Chevrolet. They had us go down and race. They, yeah, this one. Like so. they let us have that back window and we, we laid the window back. And there's a lot of neat things done to it. That this front bumper is, you know, it's put out and it's kind of it. This is probably, to my opinion, and I blew a lot of them, probably the most aerodynamic car ever for Winston Cup, right here. And it won two championships and run 86 and 87 championship. This car won because, and, I, and it all comes to the back window. Did, did you have to build, in those days, so many for it to qualify as a production car? 125. Okay. <clears throat> and I have the the car that they built that took the the uh, templates off. It's out in the garage. It's a black one. And this is this is the, the, the race, and then I got the kind of it ain't street. It was done by NASCAR. You know, it's over. You know, they checked it and everything. Made it actually made the templates off because it was all that back window. And you can see right here. See that notch? We call us a notch back. And when the air would come over this thing, it would vortex. And see, it went, what a little bit of spoiler they had, it didn't do any the length of the windshield pump to, to up here. It just, it's so long, so you can do a lot up here and then work in the back. So, Bill, how many championships? Didn't this win also with. Uh this was, actually, this was actually this was actually a Mountain Dew Buick. Here's Junior Johnson here, and it was the second one from the end. That's what it was originally when it sold to Childers in uh, '85, and this was the first Arrow Coupe they did at uh, Childers. But Junior won. I mean, uh, old Ratchet Jaw uh, Walter. <laughs> he uh, he uh, he won. I got all the cups that it won. Back there in the back, I think he won three three champions and Earnhardt won two. And as a Buick, yeah. <coughs> <laughs> change, the bill, you know, the way they change the cars out, there'll never be another NASCAR that wins five championships in five different years. Mm -hmm. Three years wow. as a Buick, two years as a Chevrolet, because they yeah. they change these cars out all the time now. It'll never happen again. Now. The thing that that really I loved about this car. There's one man, another one I really cared a lot about. He was a little bit of suspension and how to work it. Because I did a lot of testing in these. And, and, uh, but he was, he was the key to me to do less and do more. Uh, what I mean less is all this geometry and everything. And he did it with just, you know, uh, steel, you know, adjustments and stuff like that. And he, he was just great. Banjo, uh, he, when he died, he, he lost, we lost a good man. the actual chassis that was the passing the grass car. Could you, you, ask, that? could you ask that question? Back in the day, these cars were just getting where they made a, a short track car, an intermediate. And most of the time, they made the intermediate to a, to a super speedway car. Then they had the road race cars were... Uh, or this, you know, shorter track. They used the road races to that. But what they did is they started separating these cars so they didn't want to mix them up because the super speedway car was, they had to do too much to it to go to super speedway and then the next week could be Talladega or, you know, or, or the longer tracks. So they kind of separate and that's, that's the only way this car ever lived because it if that wrecked at Super Speedway, it was done. So, I mean, they, they did some fender damage on it, but they didn't really actually, you know, put the, the nose to the windshield. The thing that screwed me up was they I couldn't find the number. I kept aggravating these. I'm a busy man. I got any bull crap with you. I said, Junior Johnson. And he says, here's what the neat thing was. The first time they took it out, they won the race. First time. So it's been a win in car. I drove it at Daytona for 
got all original stuff for me to put on and this is like the l88 ram the air in yep. in there on site and went into the carburetor unbelievable yeah you guys want to come on over and see this come on got a carburetor just a four yeah, right the engine's crooked oh, didn't they didn't yeah. they used to call us tarantulas didn't they no, no. <laughs> This is this is the actual car too. That he won the championship with. They have been so good. One of them. on it with that's just the engine that run in that car oh. and this one was the vacuum cleaner car that's on the bottom with me and mr hall there this run in that car and that thing steve tell them what you got the last 427 oh. yeah, steve's got story. something neat that if anybody's got a, a something on lift we got to steal it one night <laughs> and get it out here and get it we, we've done a few projects with, well, first off, let me back up. My, my parts director, is a, he's a big wholesale, we're being wholesale parts at Stingray. We're currently about number 33 out of 4,300 GM dealers in part sales. We're about top 1% uh, in the country. Well, we, we uh, do a lot of shows with GM, and we do some of them representing Stingray. My guys sometimes go, for example, to the Barrett-Jackson sale down in Palm Beach, and just GM contacts us, and we don't even wear our Stingray shirts, it's just to represent GM and help them out. And so we could partnership. Well, we sold a, a, uh, one of the aluminum continuation ZL1 motors. They made 427 of them about 10 years ago, and they numbered 427. And so we sold one. Well, Bill calls up, the guy says, Bill, my parts manager, said, there's several, you know, a few of them available out there that dealerships have never sold. But he said, and he says, no, I want one from GM. Well, he made a phone call. Well, GM had two left. And so the guy, the guy, the guy says, well, I just, want a, I just want a new one. So so Bill calls up there, and uh, he says, hey, we need this, this engine. There's two left. And so he sends him this, he sends him this motor, and then Bill calls, he looks at it. He says, there must be something wrong because this motor said number 427 of 427. Because you know they made the 69 Camaro, 69 Camaros in 1969 with aluminum ZL1s and two Corvettes with the aluminum motor, and then they made the continuation, which was 427 of them. Well, then he let me know, and so we contacted him. We said, "Hey, we, we think you may have made a mistake. This is the, the very last one." They said, "Oh, well, well, hang on. That one's that one is already sold. It's not supposed to go. There was a different one that's sold to a museum." 
and it's supposed to, we need to get that back. So, well, the guy, we have an email that says he was okay sending this exact serial number, the 427th one. So, usually when GM sends me a part, they bill, especially a part that's a 22, $24,000, $25,000 part, they bill me a Overnight, it's it just it's uh, electronic funds overnight for my part, open parts account where where they take money and the money goes both ways. Well, they they normally bill us immediately. Well, they didn't bill us, and then they didn't bill us, and then they didn't bill us. And when I kept asking about it, it went on for weeks, and about two months later, they finally told us that, that they unwound the motor. They're commitment manufacturer. Now they sell the the blocks. You can you can buy them and piece one together to this day, but the actual numbered. ZL ones that they made. This is the very last one. Uh, we put one in a '66 Corvette that we sold. Uh, I sold that to a customer who's also bought several new Corvette, bought a new 420, a new uh, ZL6 just this past month in December. But we sold put one in a '66 Corvette. Really, he put a shark bite suspension, a, a cantilever horizontal uh, coilover suspension on this body style a Corvette '66 big block car. Really neat car. So we put one in there. I've got two more on the shelf right now, plus this uh, this very very last one. And so uh, I, I wanted to bring it over here to show it in Bill's museum. I haven't quite figured out the, the insurance part of it, but uh, you don't trust me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not that out. But it's kind of a neat deal. But we do ha have the very last Z aluminum Z01 assembled engine ever by General Motors. Will it, will it ever go into a car? The last of the first half of the run, which doesn't matter. It's just interesting. Uh, number 213 is what we put in that 66 Corvette. And I've got two other, I think one number's in the 300s and one number's in the 200s. But we've got a total of three of them, Stingray. Hmm. That's, well, that's neat. Obviously, I'm talking about the No, retail. I'm not talking about your 427. It's got documentation. It does. Because it it's supposed to have been in a museum. Right. How many of the race motors like this did they build? Is there any idea? No, they built quite a few. I mean, yeah, well, they, I don't know. they only had a, you know, they only made very few of these, so they can't be many, you know. I just knew about the the 69 they put in the Camaros. I've got a friend right now who has one of the uh, uh, the, the vehicles here in Central Florida area. He's got one of the, the Z01 Camaros, and it's got the correct engine in it. He's got the original window sticker, the whole deal. So it's one of the 69, and then supposedly up in Orlando is one of the one of the two Corvettes, that black and yellow one. Yeah, uh, that's they had a real story yeah. to it. And then there was one other. I don't know what happened to it, yeah, but yeah, yeah. those are the. 71 that I know of that were ever sold before they did the reincarnation back in about 10 years ago when they made the number the whole thing of everything. <laughs> and a fellow that came to visit a while back, he's very special to me, his name is Jim Pitt Perkins, that used to be president of Chevrolet. He's the one who enlightened me about this thing. I caught, going back to Smoky Eunuch again, we were working a project over there and we were doing some ceramic cylinder walls trying to figure out you know, on some of this race stuff that it, the ceramic was better or not. But anyway, but one day I caught Smokey in a good mood, and I asked him, I seen him, I seen this engine back in his back storage area there, and, his, and everything piled on, you know, and I said, how about selling me that motor back there? And he don't sell nothing. <laughs> so he says, uh, I need it. I'm gonna. You're not gonna do nothing. Well, I ain't gonna do nothing with it. And uh, and he says, uh, yeah. So I we figured out a price. So I paid him. I knew better. So I did this. I give him the money. I backed the truck up, tied that damn motor in there, <laughs> and I was headed back to Plant City because we worked all night, two days, and I didn't get up. So I brought it back, and then I put it in the garage. And then I went back over there to try to, do, to finish up the project. And about three or four days later, he says, you know, I think I'm just going to keep that motor. <laughs> and I said, it's too late. I don't got it at the house tore down. <laughs> well, anyway, you know, from then on, I didn't buy nothing from him. <laughs> 56, real prototype, EXP. One, zero, 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 two. So I go back to Smokey, and you know, I didn't realize that it had on the heads EXP one, zero, 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 one. So that's the first set. But as I got in, I talked to him about the, 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 uh, the block, and he says, yeah, the first one come out of Tonawana when we, 
We built the block. See, he designed, I don't know if you're in the Chevrolet as much, but you know, the oil filter comes, the cartridge comes up into the block. 55 didn't have that, remember that? Right. Had that thing, he told it as a toilet wrapper, but put your toilet paper down there, and it, that's what it did. It just did nothing, you know, just oil up. Well, anyway, he says, I want, to, so he, he got on the blueprint and drew the motor out and put that oil, that canister and everything in the 56. And then they made, you know, they had to redo the block and recast it with this oil filter in it, you know. And this is actually, he said the first one come out, they squelched the motor. When they come out of the mold, it was hot, so they tried to cool it down too quick, and it just went everywhere, you know. It, it was hard and then soft, and so they, this was actually the first one, serial number two. Was a, they just stroked the other one. But anyway, I'm going to show you the smoke. The holy grail of the evolution of the small block Chevy. Injector. Wow. Anybody ever seen these exhausts? Uh, so look nope. at these exhausts. They even got experimental number, not from Chevrolet, but from Fenton. Yeah. Yeah, the Fenton headers. There was yeah. well, it you, says, you guys you know this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, we were there. I was too. That's where I stayed most of Good for you. The thing is, it's a mile long. It goes all the way down. The other ones were shorter later, but this is all prototype. The truck, truck's a long one. My 65's got one of those yeah. on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the nice truck. Jeez. I have a 265 Chevy with a pop envelope. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Four seven. Ralph Ridgeway. I don't think I ever heard of it. Oh, you can make a tunnel ram. Yeah, put the plate on the top. Yeah, we done. I got a picture of it. Yeah, he's my roommate. This was before my time, you know, how they did this to start with. And then I learned from this a lot more than anything, you know. I was dumb as a stump. Jeez, I didn't know nothing. It's like you used a cold chisel to do this. <laughs> yeah, they were loading them well. Yeah. 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 This is the first nickel alloy block that, that right they right made? Right here. Wow. Look at the tunnel. Yeah. Ray Upperham is that. Uh, that's Perkins. He was my boss's boss. That's for, uh, you know, Henry. And that other fellow, that black guy, he is. You want to tell him what you got? Oh, this is nothing special. I brought uh, just something to throw on your glove box. Do we, we even get presents? <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank you. Send some of those back there, if you would. They've got a disc in the end of it to keep the battery fresh. You've got to take out. <laughs> Kind of a homecoming for number one to be with Bill again. After having seen him in years since he helped us with the 25 car and Randy Dorton in the very beginning of Henry's Motorsport. And didn't know he had this collection, but also didn't know as much about these cars as he was telling us today. So much of the history of the Corvette and racing. This has been probably one of the neatest days that I've spent to be educated and, and be an old friend and kind of uh, explore history. I mean, it's, it's the most significant four events that I've ever seen. So it's been a real special day to me. I don't know. It's a scuff. It's a scuff. You know. 
the one that come here to build for, for years. Uh, and finally got a chance to do it. The cars were special, but I think just listening to him that. today, maybe even more special than the cars themselves. <laughs> He, he was the go-to, he was the money man. So we no, kept it. He was the head of GM? It's been pretty spectacular. He was president of GM. Oh, is that right, president of GM? I've heard about Bill's collection a long time, but this is the first opportunity I've had to be here. And it's, it's not just about cars, but when you have the chance to walk through the Bill Tower and realize that Bill, you know, work with Billy Mitchell and you work with, with people that I grew up hearing about. And then hear Ed Wilburn talk about his relationship with, with uh, Bill Mitchell and, and some involvement in these cars. And it's just, you know, I, I this go tells it all right here now. Go back a long way with General Motors, but this really brings it all to the forefront. And uh, when you see these spectacular automobiles, some people would say, well, they're, they're you know, what, what's, what's special about them? Well, everything's special about them. In fact, <laughs> when you, you just consider this car right here, the SR2, and, and realize that. Some of the evolutionary things of it. Well, it's not. When you consider the C7 today, and you talk to Ed Wilber, and you realize that a lot of the things you see on this SR2, as far as uh, ventilation and airflow through the car, you're exactly what you see on the C7 today. And uh, to me, that just piques my interest because when you think back about where these cars came from and who worked on them and how that whole spirit is staying. Uh, true and, and, and saving place over the years. Um, it, it kind of, it, it, I put it this way it, it, if, you, if your heart doesn't pump, you just need to call the undertaker. Cause it, <laughs> 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 it's, it's something that you kind of dream about because <clears throat> each one of them are special to me and they know it in their heart. The thing that is, you know, the families that dealt with us coming up in the racing, like his dad and all, and Rick's dad and all, and, and knowing his son, you know, it, it, it was special to me that he would come here, you know, to, you know, not knowing of me, he knew of me, he said, but basically, and it just, it's it just been wonderful to me. And Jim, he, he took the lightweight to Vegas, and that was a special thing for me, that he, we unveiled the uh, 96 Prince Fork with it, and it, it just makes Chevrolet look so good. And it, it helped you feel like, you know, had a little bit of added thing to help along with the evolution of the Chevrolet Corvette, you know, or anything to do with the racing aspect of the engine screen, like that. Good. But it, it's just with me, and I think a lot of people are enjoying it. And, it, and but having you all come today has just been wonderful. to fulfill my day. Because the old is lost. Everybody thinks that the old is bad, and it, and it is. It, I call, and I just mentioned a little bit ago, this is the tap root of Corvette. It's the tap root of the racing aspect. It's the whole evolution of, if you, if you fail to understand, this is the evolution of the small block Chevy. You know, it was born in 55, but these cars made it work. And what they did, and some people don't understand, they made that motor as small as they could, so they could adapt it in anything. So, you know, you understand an old mobile or a big build motor, you couldn't put them in anything. But the small block Chevy produced the horsepower versus small, light, and really did what it was to be built. And we just, just had a hand in helping the evolution of it, and make it better and better. And it's really a wonderful thing. It's, it's, a, it's a good ride for me. But getting back to, you know, these people here, they're just special. I'll probably never do it again. You know, just, you know, it's it's, it's uh, something like a dream come true. But I want to learn me and Ed Wilbur. Ed, Ed is special to me. We beat it to me. I'm, but I've been doing stuff with Ed in the years. Because if it wasn't for him, the Heritage Center wouldn't be. You know, it's, it's come up from Mitchell's stuff up 
and it, it, he has just been gracious enough to, to keep it going. And, and I help Ed a lot on the engine stuff, and we just did the aluminum block and all and camshafts and stuff. And, but the thing that I want to elaborate is he studies the old and that helps and, that, and I think the world of him. And, that, and Rick, he's special to me because he's been through a lot and basically he, you know, he loves cars just like we do. And, well, that's who it needs to go to. It really meant nothing. And I said, you sell This was the test car for NASCAR oh, okay. to run the two valve stems yep. versus the one. The other side has the one. The two, the Unbelievable. Cylinder heads, to looking at the future and working with Jim Bingham. Uh, you were a major part of us getting cranked up at NASCAR and the, and the success we've had today. And uh, when I look at these cars and you developing the L88 and and the cars you have in your collection are unreal. And then I'm, I'm here with Mr. Perkins who saved the Corvette. And actually, Chevrolet, when we had no products in the 90s and showing us photos, he, he kept us all going as dealers. But I think, more importantly, he saved the Corvette. And, uh, and the most respected design artist. Uh, you see seven Corvettes, all the Corvettes in the future, but all the cars you design and your passion for cars and automobiles. Uh, and, you know, it's, it, I feel like I'm in, 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 a, in a holy circle with you guys in these cars because I don't know that I've ever been uh, standing among so much history. And, uh, so much that's meant to me, both in NASCAR, the automobile business, and my love for What I wanted to do is you see the car, yeah. you see the wall, it tells all the tales of yeah. this car. In general, I can tell you that. Yeah. 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 So right. mm -hmm. We start with Zara, with the three key <laughs> cars on the beach. Bill Tower, the guy we're at, he's yep. the guy that designed the four bolt main. He's the guy that bought Steve's car. He's the one that runs the Chevy garage. 
Coast uh, West Coast Classics Bowl up on 19. Okay. Small block Chevy pretty well fit in where that flathead, where they didn't people normal people just uh, in their backyard to actually plant the uh, small block Chevy in there. This is kind of like the stock one that they they had. Uh, it it has Smokey said it took him three three uh, weeks to design this air intake into the uh, into the injector. And it is, it is designed, it ain't just throw it in there. It's designed for the amount of air of wide open. He says, you never look at the top side of the car first, you did the underneath. And I says, why did, he says, the underneath tells you what the top will need. You, you follow what I'm trying to say, yeah. folks? Yeah. If you don't get the air flowing under the gear, which pulls everything, follow me what I'm saying. Yeah. When the air comes under, it tells where the air is going on the car and how fast and what you could you can manipulate the air over the car. And I learned that, and that's what helped me a lot. But basically, the top on it, he just, and he uh, he came down. And he says, "Well, one thing we do is at Daytona, we always got a crosswind off of the beach." And he says, "What I'm going to try to do is you put this fin on there." He says, "It's going to be two things." It's going to be, it, it give it a little more stability when the wind hit it, it that, that length kind of kept the car from going way up and losing it. Of course, and they had the MA band, and that, there it is right there with my boss. They couldn't race over there, so they, but they were, they were, uh, they were going to take it, and you might have to. But you can see this right here. See that little thing? They put a seal in, and they have to go so many laps at Le Mans. Yeah, that has to be on there or they get penalized. So I, that's how I knew they were going to right. take a bench lead. Bent on the side, see that cove? Mm -hmm. It goes through, it goes through the body. Had to the run, that run, run They had, had to run, uh, this run Sebron to this car and had to have a spare and that's a special knockoff wheel, knockoff hammer from Indianapolis. And then uh, I got it. And, uh, yeah. But it hasn't been touched. You know, it hasn't been uh, modified or anything. You know, I mean, <laughs> but he was he was very gracious to me. You know, I mean, he really. Um, I I showed it in the '80s at uh, uh, Daytona 500 in the tent, and just people flocked to this. And Smokey was down there. It was a good time when I went there. That's when I first got it and went in there. How about the other versions of that car build? Because yours is the racing version. Talk about the other versions of this car. Yeah, uh, you see that picture? Uh, see, this is now. I, I, this is you know, when you talk about you know, of the car, there's that at Sebring when it come across the start finish line and finish the race at Sebring. That is, I cannot believe some of you photographers, that's 57. And the photography back then, I don't know how they did it at nighttime. It was 11 o'clock at night. And that car's doing 140 mile an hour, too. Did he win that race? He didn't win it. Did it he came in second in class. And it isn't as long. It ain't nowhere near like it. Because uh, Smokey refused to work on Harley or old stuff. He just. <laughs> Step aside. That's where Smokey had all the cars. See the ticket? And it, he rented a meat locker at Daytona. And you can see the meat locker. I don't know why they didn't bring them. Yeah. I asked Smokey, is that in Mitchell one of them? But you see how they angled it for the air? Yeah. See, they, they yeah, you see it. Then. Now, what about the front of the <laughs> Now, it's, it's actually. Now, that mirror would be a brand I, I asked about that off of that six cylinder and then that V8. That V8 was killer, and Smokey was killer, and the guy that designed this thing was killer. So it's a good marriage, you know, all the way around small, you know, and then speed it as it comes through the car and let it do its job in, in this stuff. How did Smokey know so much about Arrow? Where did he get it? I mean, Listen, I think he was born with it. I really did. He, he, uh, I, I was just amazed. Like I told you, I didn't get along with it. This here, if, if anybody's been around here all their life, 
they know the lady that drove this. Her name was uh, Betty Skelton. Anybody ever heard of her? Yeah. She flew airplanes. Yes. Yeah. And well, how did she fly them? Upside down. Now, and cutting the, uh, the ribbons at the yeah. fairs. Well, anyway, she, she actually set a record with this on the beach. And uh, now Smoking prepared it, but he didn't sm uh, have nothing, you know, like he did this here. And it's a dual four car, there's never a fuel injector. <laughs> Didn't she just pass away this past year or year Who? Betty Skelton. Yeah, uh, about two or three years ago. Three years ago. Here on this. This is that when it went back. And see, here's the experimental number of what they did with the teen cars. They put the experimental, uh, experimental number from Chevrolet. And right here, folks, is all about us. Here's the three teen cars here. This is... Uh, this is John Fitch. That's Zora Dunthoff, and that's Betty Skelton there. Wow. The three team cars. And that's me and Zora and all in the SR2. This is this is also neat for anybody photographic guy. She's doing about 130, 140 here. And look at how unique he is to the car doing yeah. that speed. And the dummies, I mean, it looks like she, he's go, she's going to run over him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you know NASCAR has always got a screw with you. You see the you see the the Halibrands on the car? That's called Halibrand wheels, and they're knockoffs. NASCAR wouldn't let them run on the beach because they said it wasn't production. Well, they come out with them with the race version. But anyway, long story short, so Smokey says, "Well, we got to find some hubcaps or some rims to put on it." So he says, "The hell with them. I'm gonna put white walls and hubcaps on." That's her going to the you know, on to the beach, and that's her doing 140 with the white walls and the hubcaps on the top. <laughs> <laughs> right after the beach, he put the in. Here he is showing Rick Hendrick his collection. Everybody yeah. wants yeah. that one, 427. Wow. LA88. Yeah, that's a 67 LA88. Against the biggest clicks in the world. Started Corvette News. And when you bought a 56 or a 57 Corvette, you, when you bought a new one, you get that magazine for, for the life. But they, it ended. The only way to get it ever more than tax was the pen. He bought two 57s. Don Perdome and Tommy Ivo with him. He had that big he sure knows every, boy, he knows everybody. Roger Penske. Yeah, it's him with Roger Penske. Look at the grand sport here. And uh, I basically was in the engine development. Actually started with Jim Hall at Chaparral with the engines, and then we, we started developing it with the engines in the... Uh, took the engine out of the chaparral and started putting them in these. So, but anyway, this is this is a real neat piece, too. Uh, it's probably one of the most unique pieces. I just went to Atlanta Motor Speedway with the car, and they unveiled a new Grand Sport up there, and uh, it was really a neat thing to see the, how they enjoy the old. 8 millimeter rubbers, just like it run. All aluminum. This finished 64 and 65 at Sebring. I actually crewed on the car in uh, in 64 with Roger Penske. Bill, that picture behind you, that wasn't this at Sebring here? First. The and then, see, the other ones are the probably other three there. Probably. And there's some of the Cobras in there, too. I think at Nassau. Just rolled they, towards you. That was when they first built the car. But you certainly wouldn't do a bunch of <laughs> and, uh, This is uh, tissue thin doors, real super light. Yeah. It's got a 50 gallon tank. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know. Oh, it's got a movie it's camera. Just, see, 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 see the camera? Oh, yeah. uh, no, that's just like it was normal. Another thing this thing was really noted about was it had air jacks, you know, that lifted the car up at Seaburn. It And they, they could, uh, Jim Hall was an a engineer, a mechanical engineer like I was, and he figured out how to fuel this thing, four tires, and the other cars that uh, was the Grand Sports and all, they were still trying to fuel it up, and then that's how come the cars were like it. Weighs less than 2,000 pounds. Come out of the mold with all the, the flares and everything on, and it was like almost 100 pounds lighter than the other. Has this four body cars. ever been? It's the original body. Mm -hmm. It's never wrecked or anything. Yeah, it, and they they did it. Not bad. It's just the guy he got the car from. This car should not be here. It should not even exist. And he can tell the story. This was up. Uh, <coughs> anybody who lives in New York, you know what our Elmira and all that is, and Painted Post, New York. This car didn't have a, a, an engine in it. It was sitting in the shop. And when the flood came through, it it, uh, it turned around and it got wedged in next to a refrigerator. And it, it kind of kept it from going around. That, and the hole, it already took the, the opening of his garage out and all the cars out the way it was out. But basically, that saved it. When he come back in there, there was a car wedged against the refrigerator. And it, and it, it looks like Ferrari's bill, they're never found. Right? No, no, never found. They found a wheel or two, but that was here. The water didn't damage the car? Didn't get in it. It floated. This is a boat, long time, buddy. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, both uh, racing weight on this car, Phil? Two thousand, a little less than two thousand pounds to try. It, uh, it's the lightest one. Like I told you, the body was. And what Jim Hall did, he went into to a aircraft out to a fire range in Texas, and he watched them fuel at some of them, them uh, planes out there. And he he rigged up the same rig with a fifty-five gallon drum up on the thing with a big hose. And he made this to fit the hose with an O-ring. See, they, they laid the windshield back, and then they rolled this back, like this, <coughs> so the air would come over yeah. here. Because they, you know, they never had nothing back here to do it. These actually help downforce right here. With these enter the air into the brakes, but they, they, they created a little bit of more down out there. And this did too. Sometimes they, they yeah, that's the all cooler rear end of all cooler in the transmission. Yeah. Right here. This is a real L88, 67. Big block, you know, we had 396s. And, uh, and uh, this is apps. See, they, people don't understand. 67, the 68 should have been the 67, but they didn't have it ready. So they just made, you know, the, the coupe and made it over again. But this is actually the better car than all of them, you know, in a sense. Uh, Oh, leave oh, yeah. guys an hour later and uh, they, they're mad. <laughs> this is this is all different by arrow where the air comes in and comes through this. It's kind of the basic idea of that with a air coming in, but the air comes in like the NASCAR is by a windshield six thousand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got my buddy from Holly. We had a regular Holly guy that was right at the proving ground. And uh, so he came up with this thing. You know, he, you had to know what you're doing up there. You would have spun it out or whatever. So when they got to pulling it down, they saw somebody happened to remember that car and started researching it. It was one of those. Few cars that he had had built. Uh, just for and, uh, this is this is bad to own a car right here. Mm -hmm. And the 
the L88 decal on the hood was prior to the L88. Yeah, that that was something else we did here. We, we when they designed the hood, you know, they didn't put the 427 in the hood, and when they they kind of put this on display, everybody wanted this hood without the 427 on it. They they could, so they got rid of this and put 427 on the other. This was the prototype, but they wouldn't. They didn't want them to to, to have the hood with the not the 427. Billy underrated these at 430 horse to drop them under the uh, the L71 at 435 horse. They didn't really want to sell them, even though they're really about 560 horsepower. Yeah. Oh, no, I bought it in. He actually worked on this car. My God, that's the smallest camera I've ever seen. <laughs> it, take, it, it takes great pictures, I'll tell you. Now, this, is, this is the car that's right here. Right. 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 At Charlotte Motor Speedway with Elliot wrecking him. So, I mean, he wrecked it, whatever it was. And, but uh, this is actual passing crash car. And one of the, the key things about why I was mad at men about the Monte Carlo is I was one of the ones that helped put the back window of the Aero II. Uh, uh, worked with uh, the engineer Bob Stemple at Chevrolet. They had us go down and race. They did this one. So they let us have that back window and we, we laid the window back. And there's a lot of neat things done to it. That this front bumper is, you know, is put out and it's kind of it. This is probably, in my opinion, and I blew a lot of them, probably the most aerodynamic car ever for Winston Cup, right here. And it won two championships and run 86 and 87 championship. This car won because, and, I, and it all comes to the back window. Did, did you have to build, in those days, so many for it to qualify as a production car? 125. Okay. <clears throat> and I have the the car that they built that took the, the uh, templates off. It's out in the garage. It's a black one. And this is, this is the, the, the race, and then I got the kind of like, it ain't street. It was done by NASCAR. You know, it's over. You know, they checked it and everything. Made it, they actually made the templates off because it was all that back window. And you can see right here, See that notch? We call us a notch back. And when the air would come over this thing, it would vortex. And see it went, what little bit of spoiler they had didn't do any the length of the windshield pub to, to up here. It just, it's so long, so you can do a lot up here and then work in the back. So Bill, how many championships? Didn't this win also with uh this was, actually, this was actually this was actually a, a Mountain Dew Buick. Here's Junior Johnson here, and it was the second one from the end. That's what it was originally when it sold to Childers in '85, uh, and this was the first Arrow Coupe they did at uh, Childers. But Junior won. I mean, uh, the old Ratchet Jaw uh, Walter. <laughs> he uh, he uh, he won. I got all the cups that it won. Back there in the back, I think he won three three champions, and Earnhardt won two. And as a Buick, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Bill, you know the way they change the cars out. There'll never be another NASCAR that wins five championships in five different years. Mm -hmm. Three years wow. as a Buick, two years as a Chevrolet, because they yeah. they change these cars out all the time now. It'll never happen again. Now. The thing that that really I loved about this car. There's one man, another one I really cared a lot about. He was a little bit of suspension and how to work it. Because I did a lot of testing in these. And, and, uh, but he was, he was the key to me to do less and do more. Uh, what I mean less is all this geometry and everything. And he did it with just, you know, uh, steel, you know, adjustments and stuff like that. And he, he was just great. Banjo, uh, he, when he died, he, he lost, we lost a good man. The actual chassis that was the passing the grass car. Could you, you, ask, could you ask that question? Back in the day, these cars were just getting where they made a, a short track car, an intermediate. It, most of the time, they made the intermediate to a, to a super speedway car. Then they had the road race cars 
for, uh, for the you know, shorter track. They used the road races for that. But what they did is they started separating these cars so they didn't want to mix them up because the super speedway car was, they had to do too much to it to go to super speedway and then the next week could be Talladega or, you know, or, or the longer tracks. So they kind of separate it. And that's, that's the only way this car ever lived. Because if, if it wrecked at Super Speedway, it was done. So, I mean, they, they did some fender damage on it, but they didn't really actually, you know, put the, the nose to the winch. Uh, the thing that screwed me up was they I couldn't find the number. I kept activating these. I'm a busy man. I ain't even bull crap with you. I said, Junior Johnson. And he says, here's what the neat thing was. The first time they took it out, they won the race. First time. So it's been a winning car, I'll tell you. I drove it at Daytona for 187. They let me go out on the track with it. Really neat car. With Bobby Allison. This is the last year of the big block. I'll show you the motor in it. Banjo, uh, not banjo, but. Uh, uh, Bobby, this was uh, one of his favorite cars, Bobby Allison's car. Junior, I went up to Junior's and he, he got all original stuff for me to put on. And this is like the L88. Rammed the air in, yep. in there on <clears throat> side and went into the carburetor. Unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. You guys want to come on over and see this? Come on. Got a carburetor, just a four. Carburetor yeah, on the uh, engine's uh, crooked. Oh, didn't they, didn't, didn't, they used to call us tarantulas, didn't they? No, no. Yeah. 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 This is this is the actual car too. That he won the championship with. They have been so good to me. One of them. This is the last he did. Yeah, on it with that's just the engine that run in that car oh. and this one was the vacuum cleaner car that's on the bottom with me and mr yeah. hall there this run in that car and that thing steve tell them what you got the last 427 oh. yes yeah, steve's got story. something neat that if anybody's got a, a something on lift we got to steal it one night <laughs> and get it out here and get it We've done a few projects with, well, first off, let me back up. My, my parts director, is a, he's a big wholesale, we're being wholesale parts at Stingray. We're currently about number 33 out of 4,300 GM dealers in park sales. So we're about top 1% uh, in the country. Well, we, we uh, do a lot of shows with GM, and we do some of them representing Stingray. My guys sometimes go, for example, to the Barrett-Jackson sale down in Palm Beach, and just GM contacts us, and we don't even wear our Stingray shirts, it's just to represent GM and help them out. And so we have a good partnership. Well, we sold a, 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 one of the aluminum continuation ZL1 motors. They made 427 of them about 10 years ago. 
and it's numbered at 1,247. And so we sold one. Well, Bill calls up. The guy says, Bill, my parts manager, said, there's several, you know, a few of them available out there that dealerships have never sold. But he said, and he says, no, I want one from GM. Well, he made a phone call. Well, GM had two left. And so the guy, the guy, the guy says, well, I just want a, I just want a new one. So, so Bill calls up there, and uh, he says, hey, we need this, this engine. There's two left. And so he sends him this, he sends him this motor, and then Bill he looks at it and he says, there must be something wrong because this motor said number 427 of 427. Because, you know, they made the 69, Camar 69 Camaros in 1969 with aluminum ZL1s and two Corvettes with the aluminum motor. And then they made the continuation, which was 427 of them. Well, then he let me know. And so we contacted him. We said, hey, we, we think you may have made it. This is the, the very last one. They said, oh, well, well hang on. That, one's, that one is already sold. It's not supposed to go. There was a different one. That's sold to a museum. And it's supposed to, we, we need to get that back. So, well, the guy, we have an email says he was okay sending this exact serial number, the 427th one. So usually when GM sends me a part, they bill, especially a part that's a 22, $24,000, $25,000 part, they bill me overnight. It's it just it's uh, electronic funds overnight for my part, open parts account where, where they take money and the money goes both ways. Well, they, they normally bill us immediately. Well, they didn't bill us, and then they didn't bill us, and then they didn't bill us. And when I kept asking about it, it went on for weeks. And about two months later, they finally told us that, that they unwound the motor that are ever manufactured. Now they sell the the blocks. You can you can buy them and piece one together to this day. But the actual numbered ZL ones that they made, this is the very last one. Uh, we've put one in a '66 Corvette that we sold. Uh, I sold that to a customer who's also bought several new Corvette, bought a new 420, a new uh, Z06 just this past month in December. But we sold put one in a '66 Corvette. Really, he put a shark bite suspension, a, a cantilever horizontal uh, coilover suspension on this body style a Corvette '66 big block car. Really neat car. So we put one in there. I've got two more on the shelf right now, plus this uh, this very very last one. And so uh, I, I wanted to bring it over here to show it in Bill's museum. I haven't quite figured out the, the insurance part of it, but uh, you don't trust me. Uh, <laughs> But we do have the very last Z aluminum ZL1 assembled engine ever by General Motors. Will it, will it ever go into a car? Was the last of the first half of the run, which doesn't matter, but just interesting. Uh, number 213 is what we put in that 66 Corvette. And I've got two other, I think one number's in the 300s and one number's in the 200s. But we've got a total of three of them in Stingray. Hmm. That's, well, that's neat. Obviously, I'm talking about the No, I'm not talking about, no, not talking about your 427. It's got documentation. It does. Because it it's does. supposed to have been in a museum. Right. How many of the race motors like this did they build? Is there any idea? No, they built quite a few. I mean, yeah, well, they, they, know, they only had a, you know, they only made very few of these, so they can't be many, you know. I just knew about this, the 69 they put in the Camaros. I've got a friend right now who has one of the... Uh, vehicles here in Central Florida area, he's got one of the, the ZL1 Camaros and it's got the correct engine in it, he's got the original window sticker, the whole deal. So it's one of the 69. And then supposedly up in Orlando is one of the one of the two Corvettes, that black and yellow one. Yeah. Uh, that's they had a real story to it. And then there was one other, I don't know what happened to it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. those are the seventy one that I know of that were ever sold before they did the reincarnation back in about ten years ago when they made the number the whole of everything. And a fellow that came to visit a while back, he's very special to me, his name is Jim Perkins, that used to be president of Chevrolet. He's the one who enlightened me about this thing. I caught, going back to Smoky Eunuch again, we were working a project over there and we were doing some ceramic cylinder walls trying to figure out, you know, on some of this race stuff that it, the ceramic was better or not. But anyway, but... One day I caught Smokey in a good mood, and I asked him. I seen him. I seen this engine back in his back storage area there, and, was, and everything piled on, you know. And I said, "How about selling me that motor back there?" And he don't sell nothing. <laughs> so he says, uh, "He says uh, I need it. I'm gonna. You're not gonna do nothing. Well, I ain't gonna do nothing with it." Then, uh, and he says. Uh, yeah, so I we figured out a price, so I paid him. I knew better, so I did this. I gave him the money. I backed the truck up, tied that damn motor in there, 
and I was headed back to Plant City because we worked all night, two days, and I didn't get up. So I brought it back, and then I put it in the garage, and then I went back over there to try to do to finish up the project. And about three or four days later, he says, "You know, I think I'm just going to keep that motor." <laughs> and I said, "It's too late." I don't got it at the house, tore down. <laughs> well, anyway, you know, from then on, I didn't buy nothing from it. <laughs> 56, real prototype, EXP 10002. So I go back to Smokey, and, you know, I didn't realize that it had on the heads EXP 10002. One, so that's the first set. But as I got in, I talked to him about the 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 uh, the block, and he says, "Yeah, the first one come out of Tonawanda when we we built the block. See, he designed. I don't know if you're in the Chevrolet as much, but you know the oil filter comes, the cartridge comes up into the block. Fifty-five didn't have that. Remember that? Right. Had that then. He told it as a toilet wrapper. You put your toilet paper down there." And it, that's what it did. It just did nothing. You know, just all that. Well, anyway, he says, I want... To, so he, he got on the blueprint and threw the motor out and put that old that canister and everything in the 56. And then they made, you know, they had to redo the block and recast it with this oil filter in it, you know. And this is actually... He said the first one come out, they squelched the motor. When they come out of the mold, it was hot. So they tried to cool it down too quick, and it just went everywhere. You know, it, it was hard and then soft, and so they. This was actually the first one, serial number two. Was a, wow. They just throw the other one. Away. But anyway, I'm going to show you the smoke. The holy grail of the evolution of the small block Chevy. Ooh. Ooh. That's 283. He never, he never liked the 265. He didn't like the way it oiled. That's the injector that came off of the, the, uh, the SR2 when it set the record on the beach. That's the actual injector. Wow. Anybody ever seen these exhausts? Uh, so look nope. at these exhausts. They even got an experimental number, not from Chevrolet, but from Fenton. Yeah, they're Fenton headers. Yeah. Well, you, was, you guys have been around, you should know this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were there. Yeah, we were there. That's where I stayed most of Good for you. The yeah. thing is, it's a mile long. It goes all the way down. The other ones were shorter later, but this is all prototype. The truck? Truck said, along with my 65 job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. Huh. Jeez. I have a 265 Chevy in the pocket. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Oh, you can make a tunnel ram. Ralph Ridgeway. I don't know. Oh, you can make a tunnel ram. Yeah, put the plate on the top. Yeah, we done. I got one, but I remember. He was my, yeah, he's my roommate. This was before my time, you know, how they did this to start with, and then I learned from this a lot more than anything, you know. You know. I was dumb as a stump. Jeez, I didn't know nothing. It's like you used a cold chisel to do this. They were losing a well. This is the first nickel alloy block that, that they made? Wow. Look into the tunnel. Ray Upperham is that. Uh, that's Perkins. He was my boss's boss. That's per uh, you know, Hendricks. And that other fellow, that black guy, he is. You want to tell him what you got? Oh, this is nothing special. I brought uh, just something to throw in your glove box. Do we, do we even get presents? Wow. Thank you. Send some of those back there, if you would. They've got a disc in the end of it to keep the battery fresh. You've got to take out. <laughs> 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 
He was the go-to. He was the money man. So we kept it. He was the head of GM? It's been pretty spectacular. He was president of GM. Oh, is that right? President of GM? I've heard about Bill's collection a long time, but this is the first opportunity I've had to be here. And it's, it's not just about cars, but when you have the chance to walk through the Bill Tower and realize that Bill, you know, worked with Billy Mitchell and you work with, with people that I grew up hearing about. And then here Ed Wilbur. Here we are at Larry's Thursday morning breakfast. We're gonna go look at a guy's collection after this. And a gorgeous setup. You won't see many of these scouts around. Boy, this thing's one of the nicest ones I've seen. Said he made it out of eight different vehicles. Because they, you know, they rotted out pretty bad. I'm going to go to a guy's collection this morning. Somewhere in Florida. I guess they meet every Thursday morning and then they go to they go visit some guy's collection. The guy's got a beautiful setup here.
And we had a, here's a group photo. Evolution and uh, of course the, the main key factor to me, and it might be just just about the fur by air, was Smokey. And uh, so I learned, and he learned from me. And, uh, he used to be bit, friends with Smokey, you know. He was a good guy, and you're gonna see a lot McLaren, of McLaren bunch have been over three times, you know. And, and it's just been neat to have people because it throws them off. Where you see here, you ain't gonna realize it's all the high shots. <laughs> He worked for General Motors. He was actually friends with Smokey Unit.
Smokey actually, if it wasn't for Smokey, it probably wouldn't have been as great as it was. It, went, it set a record on the beach with Buck Baker at 152. And it just, it, what it did is the, the six cylinder in the, in the Corvette, it just didn't work. You know, they, they just didn't like it and it just didn't perform. But when the B8, when the B8 come out in 55, it had teething problems. But here's the key to the small block Chevy. And I looked in the archives and pulled it up. They wanted to put an engine in your 32 or your 33 Chevy or your 40 Ford. They wanted an engine that would go in characteristic of the flathead boards or the little small V8s, you know, but they wanted it so when you put a Cadillac or a Buick or, or something like that, it was monstrous so you had to cut too much. But the